It was courageous of a woman who knew next to nothing about cars to start an automotive college. Receive a string of achievement which includes Junior's Chamber International JCI 2010 Creative Young Entrepreneur Award, Prestige Magazine Top 40 Under 40 Award for Most Promising Female. We put in jail. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Persona. It was very courageous of a woman who knew almost nothing about cars to start up an automotive college. Today, the chief executive officer and the founder of the Automotive College will tell us about the idea which evolved into a high technology based college. And I can't wait to learn more about cars because I too, up to now, know nothing, not much about cars. So join me and let's go. The Automotive College TOC was established in 2005 with industry reveling co-curriculum based on experiential learning to produce highly competent and qualified graduates who would meet the need of the automotive industry. In an interview with the star, she said she thought of setting up an institution came about when she was interested in helping and enlightening people. Adeline received secondary education in Asunta. She continued her college years at Pasadena City College, California, USA and tertiary education at University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, USA. She graduated with a Master's of Bachelor's of Arts and received a string of achievement which includes faculty senate scholarship, seven-time recipient of Dean's Honor, Administrative Honor, English Department's Honor, Social Science Honor, and was elected as Valedictorian. She was also a winner of Junior's Chamber International JCI 2010 Creative Young Entrepreneur Award, Prestige Magazine Top 40 Under 40 Award for Most Promising Female. So Adeline, TOC and the Automobile Citroen has set up a partnership um, involving the French Education Ministry and the Brookland Motors. So tell us the idea behind this partnership. Um, yes, we're really proud of that achievement of ours to be the regional training centre for Citroen. And as automotive companies, I think it's very commendable for the French um, government and industry to want to partake in education because they realize that at the end of the day they need technicians to be working on their cars. Um, it would be difficult um, if the technicians didn't know much about their cars. Right. So I think that was the first step um, that any automotive company should really emulate um, to partner with an education um, institution like us. Uh, and for TOC it was really proud for us um, as well. And very important for us to keep in touch with the industry um, because at the end of the day if our students go out and they work as technicians uh, but lost um, with technology and what's current in the market it would serve them no purpose to Definitely. be spending two years here studying yeah. something that is already outdated. Yeah. So we hope that this would open doors to more motor companies wanting to partner with education institutions like us to educate a new generation of technicians. All right, right. So I've read on a blog online that um, TOC is looking for articulation partners in, in countries such as Japan and US. Have you, have you already achieved that? Uh, we currently have a university um, articulation in the UK, in New Zealand, in Australia, in South Korea. Um, and for two years now we've been working uh, with the university in the US and we are at the tail end of that working arrangement and we hope that we'll sign the agreement this right. year. But all these are for the purpose of opening doors again for our students because we want to make sure that the students and future students know that coming into automotive um, opens up doors to you know, getting a degree worldwide. 
So if there are more choices for the students, some, some like the cold, some like it hot. So for students then to have choices of going to down south, going to um, the US, some like the England, to give them all these choices right, right, right. Uh, would be great. Okay, so for the articulation partnership, is it necessary to have them in Japan and the US or are you looking at other countries as well? Um, I think because you know our clients, the students, they're interested in cars, so um, naturally they would look at countries who produce cars yes. um, or who has, you know, in, in the Hollywood sense, uh, popular countries for them to go to. So I think it's just natural for the student to want to pursue something in Japan or the US, being it English speaking as well. Uh, the problem with countries like um, Japan and Korea or Germany would be that they have to first learn the language. Um, and then go on, but if they want to go there and experience um, another country, it's, it's just great. They do some of the studies in Malaysia and then move on and do a couple of years in um, the country of their, their, their choice. Yeah, that's and amazing. Then, yeah, that's really great. I mean, like, how many years do they have to spend in Malaysia before? Our diploma program is two and a half years. Okay. And then it's about a year and a half to two years in the various universities wow. to complete the degree. Mm. And they have a choice to stay in, in a particular country if they wanted to, I mean, after they graduated. I mean, would they have an opportunity to work there? Do you I provide these I companies, I mean, like, you know, work for them? Yes, I'm, we, we're really proud of our students, um, the product that we produce, and we really think that the students that graduate from us are really competent. And there's a worldwide shortage as far as manpower is concerned, so if they want a job, and we have had students work in the UK and in other countries outside Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity for them to pursue a career in those countries is, is there for them. Wow, it's amazing. So you mentioned earlier that currently TOC's partners are from New Zealand, uh, Australia, um, UK. So what goes on within this partnership? What exactly goes on? Well, I suppose it's, it's a win-win situation for the university and ourselves. We want to, um, I think studying for two and a half years for the students is, is enough for them to want to pursue a career in automotive. But some of the students, about five to 10 percent now, um, actually think that they want to continue and progress to get a bachelor's degree. So, and if we're not offering that because the numbers in Malaysia um, does not uh, justify that we have our own degrees. Um, but then it, it allows all these students to choose which universities they want to go to. And for those universities then, it's also a program for them where they get students from other colleges. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so how long has it been established already, TOC? Uh, we started in 2004. Okay, so from, from that year to now, What's the percentage of students um, choosing to continue their career in automotive in Malaysia and other students who are choosing to, to work in other countries? Well, the, the percentage is rather difficult to talk about because when we first started it's like 10 students yeah. um, compared to the 1,004 mm -hmm. that we have okay. now. So um, at first when we started we didn't have any international students. So most of our students are Malaysians yeah. and therefore they would pursue their career in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um, later on, after 2007, we started to have international students. Not a lot, you know, 5 yeah. to 10 percent. But then these international students then went back to their countries to have their careers there. So, and then locally we started to place our Malaysian students internationally as well. So I would say it's about 10% of TOC's graduates moving out from Malaysia right, to work. 10%. Okay, that's good. How many students do you currently have in TOC, at TOC? About 1,400. Wow, that's amazing. So but I, I read a, I went to your website, right? And I, I was looking at all the events pages and you had the um, elite hairstyling roadshow. <laughs> What exactly happened in that activity? Well, it's it's really boring if you're you know studying from nine to six every yeah. day. So you know sometimes we have people who have road shows and they want to do some promotions. I mean we mm. offer our courtyard for them to promote their stuff, yeah. whether or not it has any relation to automotive or yeah. not. 
but it's it's a good breakaway for the <laughs> students. And so for that particular event, you know, someone had styling gel, and students and staff were models wow. for um, the classmates to um, mess up their hair, <laughs> um, to choose winners as well. So. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really fun to see the students, you know, thinking that these students only know how to handle cars, yeah. but they have the other creative side as well to handle hair. Not that they would want to pursue a career yeah, yeah, as course. a hairdresser. And yeah. there, were there boys who participated as well? Um, yes, unfortunately 99% <laughs> of our student population are boys. Okay. okay. Um, just that 1% of girls, but right. you know, everybody, they, they took it. Um, with with a lot of attitude and and, and it's fun for them. Had you fun. know, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So um, you were among the winners of the prestige top 40 under 40 awards. So share with us your view on this award. Um, I think it's, it's such it's, a it's such a great achievement to receive award. No, it's it's an honor really to achieve mm. any award. You know, sometimes we we have a career and and we work and we don't really pay attention to whether other people are paying attention to us but when they do it's, it's really happy it's it's proud that our achievements are being looked upon as an achievement mm -hmm. so TOC has attended I believe the KO International Motor Shows what was the aim for that visit I mean did you bring all your students in here well, some of our students mm -hmm. and staff went so, to, so to see it. what was the purpose it. of that? For the students really is to see what the real world is about. I mean, that's, that's the industry that they would be joining for the rest of their lives I mean, if they continue to pursue the career within it. But for us as well, like I said earlier, we want to keep in touch with what's being new in cars so that we teach what's new in the industry. Um, we want to keep what we teach our students to be as current as possible so that the learning gap for the students when they, after they graduate and they move out to the careers, they would learn new things about cars, CAN bus uh, mm. technology, um, you know, all these electronics and electrics which we pay a lot of attention mm -hmm. to in college to make sure that the students when they get out there is competing at solving problems. And they, they enjoy that, I can imagine. Uh, I was yes, there. with, with, with all the pretty girls, <laughs> yeah. uh, sexually dressed, lying yeah. on top of cars, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was there, I was taking pictures with this uh, bumblebee from the Transformers. <laughs> that was pretty good. So I'm, okay. so I'm going to read this right now because I might get the name wrong. The, the former champion of Tanzania National Rally Championship, Pritam Gandamal enrolled himself at TOC. What was your reaction when you first um, contacted TOC? Um, we felt really proud yeah. that, you know, out of all the colleges in the world, mm -hmm. somebody from another country would actually pick us, you know, pick us from a small country and they would want to come here. But that said, we actually have uh, quite a number of students mm -hmm. who are professional drivers yeah. also. And it's, it, actually, it, it's, it's, um, it, it should be something that any driver um, should do if you want to take up driving and racing professionally it's I think it's very important for you you to know the nuts and bolts of things or else you know how are you going to tell your technician how you should they should fix the car for you I agree. that's why Michael yeah. Schumacher is, yeah. is such a great driver because he knows the nuts and bolts of things mm -hmm. so you know I urge all drivers to be um, to come here and enroll and learn more about the technical bits. Thank you. I heard that as well, and I do want to be a part of your school. I mean, I've been saying it a few times already. <laughs> yeah, and female drivers are very sexy. All right. So, is he still studying here, or has he finished his um, course? He's graduated. He's graduated. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. With TOC's Career Development Center. It has successfully placed 100% of the qualified graduates into career starting jobs since 2007. What's your comment on this? I think as an educational institution, it, it is our responsibility to educate our students so that they get a career. Um, not just teach them, not bothered whether they have learned or not, and then graduate them and 
you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's your lead, call now. Lead them up to it, yeah. Correct. So if we are responsible in what we teach, we should be proud that whatever we teach them is something they can use after they graduate. So we take it upon ourselves that we place the students in the work as well as their first job and, and we monitor that. Um, so to, that's also an assurance for the faculty to make sure that whatever they teach the students is whatever they need um, when they graduate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a hundred percent placement is something that we must achieve if we want to continue to be a responsible college. That is good. I totally agree because there's like a lot of students taking up courses which they don't really like and there are subjects including it which they think they won't use in the future as well so I think it's really great that you guys do that and like guarantee them jobs in the end as well thank it's you. really amazing so thank you. Hmm, no but it's, I mean, it's a lot of it, it is always back down back to the students you know they must have the attitude to want to work I mean I can teach you all the skills you want but if you don't want to get out from bed mm -hmm. To go to work in the morning, that's really nothing much mm -hmm. I can do. What's, what's the module like? I mean, the, the, the syllabus like in here? We have um, the modules that, you know, language and humanities and, and history that the government says that they must have. They must have. Yeah, those are compulsory subjects okay. by the Ministry of mm -hmm. Higher Education. Um, then we have um, the other minor subjects like maths and science. Yeah. People think that, you know, being an automotive technician, it's just hands-on, you just do. No thinking required, that's absolutely wrong. I mean, we're trying to change the mindset of the people that modern cars now is all about electrics, electronics, there's a lot of math involved, you have to calculate, it's, it's, not, it's not rocket science, mm -hmm. but it's not something that you do without thinking as well. So technicians nowadays are really, you know, they're hands-on work, but they think as well, so it's thinking hands. So, you know, then, then there are the 80% of technical bits that they mm -hmm. must do, but it's right. very hands-on. That sounds fun. <laughs> sounds good. So, final question. TOC held a competition on Facebook for the staff and students of TOC, which is called the Movie Night. <laughs> so, do share with us the details of this competition. Um, again, it's to break away from the everyday work about cars, cars, cars. Oh, which movie did you choose for, uh, as a prize? We have a few, you know, whatever is, is interesting to the students yeah. at, at the end of does the day. It, does it have to be car related as well? It, it doesn't have to be. Um, we're actually, next week, we have Avengers wow. uh, coming to the courtyard and giving away free movie tickets. Oh, wow. So, it's so can I come? Because I haven't been to the cinema for a long time. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Amazing. <Yes. laughs> All right, thank you very much. We are going for a short break right now. And when we come back, we will be talking about the business side of TOC. Thank you. Welcome back to Persona. We are currently at the F1 Hall where students are hands-on in the cars. You can see a lot of students here trying to fix some cars or learning about them. So let me ask you the first question on the business segment. What was your career before going into automotive industry? Um, before TOC, I was a professional student <laughs> um, and this was my first job after I applied to a couple of schools and no one accepted me. Right. So, what the hell, you know, so, start a new school. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. What were you studying before? Um, I was studying performing arts, uh, Chinese opera to be exact. Wow. And you like that? Yeah, singing has always been my passion oh. and thought that, you know, if we probably won't get a chance to practice something we love for the rest of our lives, might as well use, take the opportunity while we are studying to do something um, that we love, which we would probably never touch again. And you don't get to do that now? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so how did this idea of the TOC come about? Um, it's, it's, it came about really from you know, my history of being a failed student. I, okay. I dropped out from college sixth form actually right. um, and it, it was a downtime of my life where I felt you know totally down and have no confidence of myself and people look at me with with such a look um, that I'm a failure and it was really difficult to swallow um, and so you know when I think about technicians you know we drive a car and we think that it, it magically 
fixes itself, which yeah. it doesn't. It needs a doctor to solve the problem of the cars. And technicians really are car doctors. Um, but being doctors, you know, in the surgery room, people look up to them. But being car doctors, people look down at them, which is terrible. I mean, if, if you know, there's a father who has kids, <laughs> and he's a technician and the kids going to school would probably I know, not look I know. up to him, you know, oh, my dad's an automotive yeah, technician. Yeah. I mean, it's lousy. How, how can you live your life like that being not looked up upon by your own child? And so we wanted to change that perception. We wanted to give them honour and prestige and respect, you know, from public and that's we That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, so you know that it's really interesting that you told me you dropped out of college before, because most of the successful people have actually dropped out of college. Like, for example, the founder of Facebook. I mean, he's a multi-billionaire right now, and like, I think Bill Gates as well, right? Is that right? <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't dare to even put myself, you know, ten in that, feet. No, yeah, do, no. do put your cat, your, yourself in that category because you're amazing. So, what is your perception about Malaysia's national car? I think it has lots of opportunity for it to grow. I mean, Malaysia is a small country, you know, compared to other manufacturers of, of cars. And, you know, they have had hundreds of years of history and we've had that short 20 years for our national car. And, yeah, I'm really proud of them taking, you know, that next step to be a performance car and changing people's mindsets as well, that Proton's slow cars. But they won the rally last year. And you know, I hope that they would keep it up and be on their toes and be competitive and not be complacent just because they're national car. So, you know, I think that if they take that approach and, you know, be a business instead of being someone that has political favoritism, I think that would do them good. Um, yeah. So what is the average rate of sales of Malaysian cars? Annually, um, yeah, I think I think Malaysia currently sells about 700, 800 thousand new cars every year. Um, you know, but compared to the millions of cars that are currently on the road in Malaysia, some of the lifespan of the cars goes, you know, from five to ten years. So we have that pool of cars in Malaysia, and therefore require technicians, you know, not just to fix them, but to maintain them properly. I mean, can you imagine? a car going on for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers yeah. without being maintained. I mean, things need to be changed. They wear off, so to keep the car safe, you need you know, that amount of technicians um, per day to actually service the cars. So, yeah, there's lots of opportunities for technicians to flourish in this country. And that's good, that's good. So, share with us the investment that you have made in starting up this business. I mean, let's start with the initial capital. Initially, when we first drew up the business plan, we thought that five million would survive, uh, would suffice. So, you know, that was just the initial capital of getting all the equipment in. But then, lo and behold, you know, when we first started, we didn't have the um, students um, and the income to support the operating uh, needs, and therefore we ran for a couple of years, then with no income. Um, so that's when the investment had to pile up. Um, and then, you know, because I didn't know anything about this business, I would think that, you know, once the capital was in at the beginning, I could continuously use the equipment for the rest of lifetime, yeah. which was not true. The cars need to be changed every five years, and that's another bit of investment. Um, what do you mean by that? About. Sorry, what do you mean by cars have to be changed every five years? You mean you well, have to all, change the whole thing? Well, all the cars that we have now in, in college are actually owned by the college, apart from the couple that were donated to us by the various oh, motor see. companies. But all the cars that you see with the number plate on it, the college actually had to buy it ourselves so that the students get the practical that right. they need. The students here, I'm proud to say, get at least 70% of their time practically hands-on on the car, so it has to be a running car, it can't just be a dead car that they could fix and if they don't fix it right, mm. um, it's okay, no one will find out, mm. but these are real cars, they have to fix it right, it has to be driven out of the college every night, so mm. 
they the students have to be on their toes every day to make sure that they are competing technicians already, yeah. although they're still students. So, but cars wear out and the technology also gets old. Um, it, we can't be teaching a 10-year-old car here. So we have to make sure that it's current and it has new technology and we have, you know, CAN bus, electrics, electronics, and different types of bus systems and EFIs and, and so on. Um, so to give the students as wide as possible a platform for them to gain their experience. Right. So which companies do you lay? With, uh, in terms of like getting the cars, do you have? Well, well we, let me we see. you've got. Yes, we, we we try to have you know a mix of the local cars, mm -hmm. Asian makes, um, whether Japanese or Korean, and continental cars. Um, you know the Mercedes and the BMs that you see here, and of course the French ones um, like Citroen. Um, but really, if you go back to what our vision was, which was to change the mindset of the public and the technicians themselves that this is a respectable industry to be in. I can't be teaching the students on junks. I have to make sure that I give them the prestige um, and therefore give them, you know, cars yeah. above average. Mm -hmm. So what were the risks that you faced in starting up a business as such? Let's, let's, let's say from the shareholders. Well, the shareholders, you know, in hindsight, were really crazy <laughs> in entrusting me with all the money and all the investment because I didn't know anything about cars. I didn't know anything about the education industry. Um, I didn't know anything about managing a company. I told you I was a professional student. Yeah. So the risk really is in me doing it and learning it at the same time. So it was a really tough learning curve for me at the beginning. But then, you know, you, you, you learn and you fall and you get up um, and find the right people, have the right team to do this with you because, you know, what you see today is really not just my achievement. It's, mm -hmm. it's really the staff who's been with me through thick and thin, you know, and, and do this to what it is today. Mm -hmm. Of course, the risk, you know, from the market point of view, again, where the parents and students will accept uh, wanting to be in this industry, um, to pursue a career in this industry. When we first started and we had our first enrollment, we only had 10 students apply. Um, I mean, can you believe it? Nobody wants to be a technician. Yeah. Parents run away from us because they mm. think that we're crazy. Yeah. But then, you know, it, it takes a while to slowly change the mindset of the public that, you know, this is a valuable industry to get into. Of course, the risk of then that our students are not good enough for the industry and mm -hmm. would, our, would the industry hire our graduates. Mm -hmm. um, but we manage those risks and we make sure that we come up with the best product po possible for That's the good. industry. That's good. Talking about managing your risks, what sort of risk management strategies do you do in terms of what, what you just said? Well, it's, it's learning at the moment but we try to have you know as far as human resources possible where we have a team and there's succession in place we have things that are in service and it is protected to make sure that our intellectual property is not stolen because at the end of the day what we teach is what we we wrote ourselves apart from that it's good fortune <laughs> I hope <laughs> I don't know so let's move on to the credentials what credentials does TOC hold at the moment? Just, you know, just give me two examples. Is it internationally renowned? Um, well, we are very proud to be approved by the Ministry of Higher Education and then accredited by the MQA, the Malaysian Qualifications Agency. Um, we're also approved by the Ministry of Human Resources and with all the affiliations that we have with all the universities in different countries um, shows that we are also recognized by them. So we're really proud of that. Right. Moving on to the programs, what programs are incorporated with TOC? Well, currently we have two really active and popular programs. That's the Diploma in Automotive Technology and the Diploma in Motorsports Technology. And which one is more popular? Well, it's, it's difficult to say because automotive technology was you know, started from the very beginning and motorsports just came in for a couple of years. Um, so the growth of motorsports um, is, is um, higher than automotive. But then 
you know, cur currently we have about 10% of our students doing motorsports. Um, yeah. Okay, so which, in your opinion, needs more um, attention in, in, in the automotive industry? Um, I think at the end of the day is, is the nuts and bolts of things, is the technical skills. The technical skills. Yeah. He, some, there's two people, there are two fields of thoughts. You know, some people think that you know if you want to be a manager in a workshop, um, you want to be in sales, um, you want to be all, in all these customer service areas. There is no need for you to be technically competent. I beg to differ. I think that you would be a very good manager if you know the technical bits. If not, then you're just someone who is an administrator and then the technical people will be lying to you and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So to be a very competent manager, you really need to know all the nuts and bolts of things. Right. Yeah. So here's a technical bit. Okay. <laughs> right. How does the automotive college help raise the benchmark and expectations for after sales service in Malaysia? Well, well, first of all, we have, um, we're really proud to come in to teach automotive technology to um, graduate technicians under the Ministry of Higher Education and come up with an, an, uh, a formal diploma for that and not just something that is skills-based. Um, we then changed the passing mark from 50% to what is normally accepted to 80%. So anything below 80% you have failed the course. Right. Um, but it's, it's not so difficult to understand. I mean, one car has four tires, it's 25% each. If you lose 25%, the car doesn't move. So really, as a skills person, you really need to be 100% competent. So that's our first step to how to improve that. And of course, you know, to constantly upgrade our syllabus to make sure that it is very close to what the market wants because at the end of the day, the students graduate, they have to work in the market. Mm. Do you think that it act, that this school has actually changed the perception of people towards mechanics? I, I believe so. I mean, you know, having 1,400 students shows that there are 1,400 families out there who think that it's good enough a career for them um, compared to the 10 in the very beginning. So yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's a great achievement, yeah. I believe. Um, so let's talk about the site here in PJ. How many students do you currently have? Currently I have 1,004, mm -hmm. um, but it can accommodate up to 2,000. Right, so what's the statistics with male and female students? 1% uh, female students, but we're proud of that, you know, 1% of course. 1%. <laughs> so, um, what are the different projects or activities that the students partake in when they join this school, this college? Um, activities of student clubs and societies, you know, of course that's based on individual um, preferences, you know, some like badminton, some like football. Motorsports, as far as motorsports is concerned, you know, we would go for races and track days. And oh yeah? Yeah, the, uh, we, we would fix the car, so, so we have a motorsports, uh, TOC motorsports team made up of both faculty and students and then they fix up the car and tune it and bring it to race and wow. see how well how they do. How often does it happen? Um, whenever there are drag battles in the Saturday Night Fever. Sounds fun. <laughs> Sounds really fun. So in, in, in running a business as such, right, is there any requirements from the government that you need to do in this college? I mean, if, even if it's not related to cars at all. Well, the compulsory subjects that all um, accredited higher education institutions must do is, um, for example, the national language, Malaysian studies, um, really? moral and, and Islam studies. You know, but then as far as the major side of things are concerned, what's technical, they leave it up to us really okay. because we're the experts in doing it. But then they do uh, give us suggestions on improving on maths and science, for example, um, and we take it on board and, and we try to listen to their suggestions as well. So what other future plans does TOC have at the moment? 
Let's well, say um, we have our um, first campus away from Malaysia yep. in Australia mm -hmm. on the Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to get that up and running um, and successful before we then move on to other countries. And hopefully, you know, who knows, in 100 years time, TOC would be spotted around the globe, uh, one in every country. Definitely, definitely. And in Malaysia, how many branches do you have? Just here Just in, in PJ. But do you plan to have more branches um, around no, Malaysia? No, not. not not in the plans at the moment. Right, right. What sort of incentive do the government provide for your business? Um, well, for our diploma students, uh, they get to apply for student loans wow. uh, from PTPTN. So that's that's you know important to help students go through a diploma if, even if they can't afford it themselves. So so that's helpful. That's good. That's good. So what what other activities do your students partake in in terms of networking um, well we have uh, they, they attend talks by um, the industry who sometimes come here and give talks about what the career is like in the automotive industry so we have people like Toyota and Mercedes coming here and tell students you know opening their eyes to what's available out there um, yeah hopefully that would give the students more insight into the uh, industry but then um, it's, it's also a, a very important part of TOC where the students participate in uh, social welfare. So, you know, we have dinners and, and uh, visits to orphanages uh, where sometimes we go there and help oh, them wow. with stuff or they, we invite them to come here mm. to have dinner with us. That's good. And the students enjoy being with the kids. And yeah. I think it is then when they realize how lucky they are. And so I think that's a very important part of developing themselves and, and their attitude in life and knowing how lucky they are and therefore you know, holding on to what they have and not just give it away. Okay, so it's good that you mentioned the activities with, with the orphanage, but what other activities do you do in terms of CSR? Um, well, I think CSR, you know, even as a company or an individual, we are indebted to society to give back some, you know, karma, you give some, you get some. Um, so for the general public, for example, we would offer them to come here. The students will fix the car for them for free, um, provided they bring the parts and they buy the parts beforehand and, and we fix it for them. So that's part of it. All right. Thank you very much, Adeline. Gosh, it's so hard to pronounce your name <laughs> because I haven't actually called someone that name because I haven't met so many people with that name. Now, we're, we're going to go for a short break and when we come back, we're going to go check out the personality of this amazing woman right here. She's going to show us what other things she does when she's not working. Stay with us. Okay, so right now we're going to talk about, um, you know, your personality, your lifestyle. So w what do you do on your free time? Um, apart from work, yeah. I get home and then I, you know, wish to spend as much time I can with my kids. Mm -hmm. um, so, but if I had nothing in this world to worry about, yeah. I'd, I'd like to go singing and watch right, movies. Right. So, do your kids show any signs of interest in cars? Um, yes, unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> My elder son has always been very technical, so right. he would break things apart. I, be, I bought him wow. a, a car, okay. uh, so a not real car. It. Yes, he actually dismantled it. He turned it upside down and used uh, screwdrivers and unplugged everything. Um, the young one, uh, who's only two, loves driving. So every time when I come home from work, he would, with his little language skills, give me, give me, car key, car key. <laughs> and I'll take him driving and he'll be messing around with oh, all the indicators and so stuff. Cute. Some of these mugs are not available for sale and we... I, I remember one, when, um, I went to the one in one of the cities in the US, I can't remember, and they had this tea mug, if I, maybe it's at the back, but it wasn't for sale. Like, can you just sell it to me, please? And I was, but it's not for sale. I don't have a SKU number for it. So you, you have a massive collection of Starbucks mugs. First of all, why Starbucks? Um, I love their philosophy, uh, their company vision and mission. It's, it's, 
It's a brand that I hope that one day I could make my company into mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. Starbucks. Yeah. It's I, I really I I really have a passion for the Starbucks brand. Right. Um, and people think that I actually own shares right. of that company, which I don't. <laughs> um, but I should. <laughs> you should. <laughs> You should actually become an ambassador of Starbucks. <laughs> I wish I could. Um, yeah, but I, I go. I, I really believe in that brand. Mm -hmm. um, it, it holds a place in my heart. How? Uh, why? How so? What vision is it that you believe in? It's them believing in the people um, working for them. I mean, sometimes companies just feel that oh, they just pay the people and they work for them. But it's every person in the organization, up to the barista, really loves the things uh, that that company does and, and believes uh, that they are owners of that company. Right. And I hope that the people working for me in my organization mm -hmm. will also feel like that. Mm -hmm. it's, a good, it's a good vision to hold on to, yeah. So when did you start collecting these mugs? Ever since they started in Malaysia, really. <laughs> a long time Yeah, ago, it's a then. collective collection mm -hmm. uh, that all of us mm -hmm. in the family right. shares. So every single family member, they, they give their shares on the collection? Uh, yes. <laughs> wow. Do you actually use these mugs or are they just for display? We actually use them, especially wow. during festivals. Mm -hmm. um, we would bring out the cups of that particular season. Do you know how many mugs you have at the moment? Um, have you, have you lost count? Actually <laughs> counted. You never um, counted it. No, mm -hmm. but I believe it's above 100. <laughs> oh wow. It, it, okay, so continuing with this mug collection. So we, it, it, if you look at a certain mug, would you know where exactly you got it from? Well, for the city mugs, it's pretty obvious. Uh, they it's are written there, yeah. Correct, you mm -hmm. only get them from a particular city. But okay. some of it, um, I would remember, like I have a Valentine's mug which has stainless steel at the bottom and I got that from Gunting because yeah. everyone has been asking me, have, they've never seen this mug, so I tell them where I got it from. Um, yeah, some, some of them I could remember. Right. So do you get some sort of emotional attachment to these mag mugs? <laughs> Very much. Because, you know, the, the mugs are only manufactured and produced for that particular season and after that mm. it's, it's gone, they not will not reproduce to. it. So mm -hmm. if I drop it or I break it, I'll never get it again. Right, right. So, um, aside from collecting mugs, do you have any pets? Um, I have a dog at home. What um, kind of dog is it? It's, it's a golden retriever. Mm -hmm. uh, Angel her, oh. is her name. Um, but my parents has cats and I, some of it, I, I bought them with my parents. Um, and I remember the first one that uh, he had, Ginger. I was pregnant then and I remember choosing that kitten out of a litter. Yeah. And Ginger was the only one who slept on my stomach. Oh, that's um, cute. And that's why we that's chose adorable. her. That's yeah. adorable. So you've traveled in so many cities in different countries around the world. Which one would you say is your favorite city? It's really the city where I have friends. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's not really the destination mm -hmm. or the place. I mean, things I of agree. interest uh, you, you can see in, in, in um, Discovery Channel. Yeah. Uh, but then it's the people that you can't duplicate. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Because, you know, it's the same thing for me. If I have friends in a certain country, then I definitely would go back there very often. So. And um, thank you very much for taking the time out to chat with us. I mean, you're an amazing person. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you for taking I'm the a time. big fan of yours. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, Miss Adeline, for you. Um, catch us again on Persona next week for another episode. Channel 127 only on Hip TV. Thank you. <laughs>